The Endangered Species Act by Laura Boyce. What is an endangered species? The Environmental Health Center defines endangered species as animals, birds, fish, plants, or other living organisms threatened with extinction by man-made or natural changes in their environment. The IUCN, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources, maintains a list of all the species it considers critically endangered, endangered, or vulnerable. It's called the Red List of Threatened Species. It brings together the world's leading scientists to assess the conservation status of species, subspecies, varieties, and subpopulations on a global scale, highlighting species threatened with extinction and promoting their conservation. Extinction Animals can become extinct because of predators, lack of food, diet, changes in climate, natural disasters, or disease, but usually they are wiped out because of human activity. For millions of years, only one or two species of plants or animals became extinct every year. Recently, extinctions have become more frequent, with 365 species becoming extinct in 1992, which is an average of one a day. A major cause of extinction is deforestation and the destruction of wetlands. The growing human population uses more land and resources. At one time, almost one half of the earth was covered with forests, but now only about one-fifth remains. Homes and roads are destroying woodlands. The animals that live there now have smaller areas, which can support that many of them. Pesticides and fertilizers leave residues in soil, water, and food. Factory fuels and car exhaust fumes contaminate the air, which can harm the animals. DDT and PCBs and similar chemicals pollute the soil and water. When animals at the bottom of the food chain are poisoned, all the others are affected. We have perhaps one in four mammals now on the threatened list. We have one third of all amphibians on the threatened list. So we know that we are progressively pushing more and more species to the edge of extinction. We have lost half of the world's forests, half of the world's wetlands, half of the world's grasslands. We are systematically eradicating many of the habitats that make up the world's ecosystem. The lead up to the ESA. In the 1960s, Americans became aware of the damage being done to the environment and the threat posed to animal and plant species by economic growth. In September of 1962, Rachel Carson's book, Silent Spring, was published, which said that DDT was poisoning and killing animals. Carson told people that she was not trying to ban helpful pesticides but was encouraging responsible use with awareness of the chemical's impact on the whole ecosystem. Some critics claim that she wanted the elimination of all pesticides. On February 8, 1972, President Richard Nixon addressed Congress about the environment. Even the most recent act to protect endangered species simply does not provide the kind of management tools needed to act early enough to save a vanishing species. Declaring existing conservation policies inadequate, Nixon tasked Congress with devising new legislation aimed specifically at protecting species and their ecosystems threatened by economic encroachment. The result was the Endangered Species Act. The Passage of the ESA When Congress passed the ESA, public support was widespread. The Senate passed the bill unanimously, and only four members of the House of Representatives voted against it. Richard Nixon signed the act on December 28, 1973. Before signing the ESA, he said that nothing is more priceless and more worthy of preservation than the rich array of animals with which our country has been blessed. During the signing ceremony, Nixon said, This legislation provides the federal government with the needed authority to protect an irreplaceable part of our national heritage threatened wildlife. Snail Darter versus the Teleco Dam. Initially, there was no conflict about the ESA and it received almost unqualified support. The first controversy involved a small fish called the Snail Darter that was listed as endangered in 1975. After the listing, a conservation group brought a lawsuit against the Tennessee Valley Authority, TVA, to stop the completion of the Teleco Dam on the Little Tennessee River, the habitat of the Snail Darter. Construction of the Teleco Dam had begun in 1967. The lawsuit said that the dam would jeopardize the survival of the snail darter species and that Section 7 of the ESA prevented them from completing the dam. 
And the TVA argued that it had followed the law consulted with the Fish and Wildlife Service. It had begun building the dam before the ESA. Congress had given money for its completion, and it was vital for the economics of the entire region. In 1978, the Supreme Court interpreted Section 7 as strictly prohibiting any activity by any federal agency that might jeopardize a species listed as threatened or endangered. The Supreme Court's decision outraged some of Congress. There was a conflict between the industrial lobby and the environmentalists because the lobby was pressuring Congress to revise the ESA. Congress compromised by approving the 1978 amendment to the ESA. The Endangered Species Committee, ESC, could grant exemptions that were halted by the ESA only if the economic benefits outweighed the benefits of conserving the endangered species. Congress expected that the ESC would exempt Teleco Dam. Under the amended law, the ESC could grant an exemption if its members determined that no reasonable and prudent alternative to the proposed agency action existed and that the proposal's benefits clearly outweighed the conservation of the species in question. However, the ESC refused to grant an exemption. The TVA made plans to modify the dam's design to comply with the ESC's ruling and protect the snail daughter's habitat. But in 1979, Congress passed a law authorizing the TVA to continue with the original construction plans of the Teleco Dam, which destroyed the snail daughter's habitat in the Little Tennessee River. Biologists introduced them into several other area rivers, including the Holson River. The snail daughter population increased and was downlisted from a danger to threatened in 1984. Controversy over listing of species Only a small fraction of the species on the IUCN Red List are listed for protection by the ESA. The conflict between commercial interest and environmentalists is still going on today about the application of the ESA. In the last two years, no new species have been listed. In March 2006, over 5,700 biologists sent a letter to the Senate expressing their support for the ESA. Here are some quotes from the letter. Biodiversity is our nation's natural wealth. The Endangered Species Act safeguards these riches. As children, small creatures endlessly fascinate us. As adults, we can protect them so as to inspire future children. To weaken the scientific foundation of the Endangered Species Act is to doom more species to extinction. We share this planet with many species. It is our responsibility to protect them, both for their sakes and our own. ESA Success Stories The ESA has increased the numbers of many listed endangered animals. Due to real estate, oil development, and commercial fishing, the Kemp's Ridley sea turtles became nearly extinct by the 1970s. Now nesting sites have been re-established along the Texas coast. The banning of DDT, increased habitat protection, and captive breeding programs have caused the number of bald eagle pairs to go from 416 in 1963 to approximately 9,789 in 2004 through 2006. Today's status. Despite the gains achieved by the ESA, there remains concern for endangered species in the U.S. and globally. In 2001, the Stanford Environmental Law Society said, Enacted in 1973 without opposition, the Act has become a focal point for controversy over the past 27 years as efforts to protect species have clashed with traditional views of economic progress. Now it is 35 years since the Act was passed. It has been amended in 1978, 1982, and 1988. Environmental organizations such as Greenpeace, Earth Justice, National Wildlife Federation, and WWF continued as advocates for endangered species. Despite numerous bills and proposals for change, Congress has not agreed on how and whether to amend the ESA. Many people accept that the ESA is not a perfect law, but few want to do away entirely with endangered species protection.